Hey YouTubers, it's Don from True Cable coming at you again. Uh, today we're going to talk about load bar plugs and how they're different from pass throughs and why you want to use load bar plugs, especially on CAT 6A Ethernet cable. Uh, but first, we're going to talk about the various tools and the actual plug in accessories that you're going to want to have uh, in order to accomplish this. So be right back. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is and something I recommend when working with Ethernet cable. Always have a good pair of flush covers. So we got flush covers here. You'll also need a cable cut and strip tool. Now our all-in-one crimp and termination tool, while it does not cut, it does have an excellent stripper on it. Uh, but we'll, for today's demonstration, we'll use our cut and strip tool. And of course, you will need an RJ45 crimp tool. Okay, so those are the primary tools you'll need. Uh, now, when it comes to the cable, I'm gonna demonstrate category six riser cable. It's already terminated on one end with a low bar plug, but we're gonna go through the process and actually put it on the other end and then perform a test. So we have a, what's known as a solid nose. It's a solid nose standard RJ45 8P8C plug. And the way it works is the load, there's a load bar and it is position sensitive, which means that it only goes into the plug one way. And you will put the conductors through the load bar, flush cut, and then put the entire assembly into the plug. And I'll show you all the nuances and little nits and nats around that. Uh, of course, we'll also want to use a strain relief boot. Uh, large cut to fit is the proper strain relief boot to use with our category uh, six cable along with this six, six A load bar plug. So the large cut to fit strain relief boot. I'm gonna use the T568B sequence, and because that's the sequence I used at this end of the cable, so I'm gonna make them the same. And that is white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, and brown. And leave yourself enough room to flush cut and get the load bar on. Okay, so white, orange, orange, White, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. That's, and here's a pretty likely spot right here, the flush cut, so we'll flush cut. All right, so the load bar, as I said, is position sensitive. So there's a wide end and a narrow end. The wide end goes on first in the angle. Uh, there's an angle on the load bar. As you can see, there's a flat side and an angled side. Now, if you're looking at the conductors top down, white, orange at the top and brown at the bottom, that angle needs to be facing you, your face. If on the other hand, your brown conductor is at the top and your white, orange is at the bottom, then you want the flat side of the conductor facing up or towards you. So considering I've got white, orange at the top and brown at the bottom, I am therefore going to have the angle facing me. So simply rock the load bar onto the conductors. It may take a couple of tries. Now you're not gonna actually be able to get all the way to the cable jacket. So you're gonna wanna keep attention to the distance between the end of the cable jacket and the beginning of the load bar. You want approximately one eighth of an inch between the end of the jacket and the beginning of the load bar. Confirm your color sequence is still correct. White, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown, it is and then go ahead and flush cut at the front of the load bar, like so, and you've got this little assembly like this. Now with the angle side of the load bar facing up and with the plug on, uh, upside down, in other words, the golden contacts facing you, you're going to push this into the plug until the load bar seats under the golden contacts. And it'll come to a nice firm stop. You'll notice that it did. And so now the load bar is completely under the golden contacts and it's been seated in there. And if you take a look at that load bar and how it's in the plug, you'll see that it is going to only go in one way. The next step is you have to actually move the strain relief boot up. So take your strain relief boot and then move it up the cable and push it into the rear of the plug so that it's one unit like that. 
And then once you get it to a point to where that strain relief boot is flush against the rear of that plug, you're going to put it into your crimp tool. Now, when you start to put it in there, this uh, top part of your strain relief boot may hang up on your tool. That's okay, just push on the, the uh, strain relief boot, the, uh, the actual tab, push it down so it can go all the way into the crimp tool. Just push it in lightly, take your hand off, and then push the handle all the way down, then release, take the plug out. And that's it. So what you've got here is a strain relief boot that's good and locked down there. And it's providing some good strain relief to that. And all eight golden contacts are down and it looks good. So the next step is testing it. So anytime you make a cord like this, and by the way, um, if you're making patch cables, I recommend actually you buy them factory pre-terminated. I made a patch cable here uh, just for demonstration purposes, but you know, oftentimes terminating RJ45 plugs onto solid copper, uh, Ethernet is not the best idea. Uh, honestly, uh, you should use steel termination plugs if you need a male plug, but there are times when you do need to use an RJ45 on one end. Uh, but I have to hasten to add, if you're going to be using Category 6A, um, you should avoid any kind of pass-through straight across plug, use the load bar stagger plug, or use a field termination plug for best results. That's for Category 6A specifically, because reaching 10 gigabit can be an issue with any other plug. So let's go ahead and put this into the fluke tester and see what we get. Okay, so I have selected a very, very tight test to run here. I selected TIA category or patch cord CAT6 two meter, and I'm using patch cord adapters on the Fluke certifier. These patch cord adapters measure crosstalk at the connector. So it's a very tight test that I'm running here. And if there's anything wrong, we're gonna know. So let's find out. We got a full pass, yeah. So, why did we get a full pass? Well, number one, I was being really careful with my terminations. I was using the uh, all important uh, cable boot to help stabilize the connection. And uh, the low bar plugs are gonna give you a much better opportunity to get the cable jacket as far up into the plug as you can, which helps reduce the crosstalk at the connector. Again, the fact that this passed is, is good, but oftentimes, field terminated patch cords that are using RG45s don't pass this kind of test. But in this case it did. So I'll just chalk it up to one for the universe, one for luck. Uh, if there is uh, any other questions you may have about terminating low bar plugs or why you should use them over certain types of other plugs like pass-throughs and pass-throughs have their place too, or why field termination plugs are the best of the best, Leave us a question in the comments below, send us a message, we'd be happy to get back to you. Subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And I'm gonna say with that, have a great day and happy networking.